What's happening, guys? My name is Adam, aka Speed Spectrum, and welcome back to Let's Play and Dub The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening for the Nintendo Switch. In the last episode, holy moly, did we obtain a lot of secret seashells. Not only that, but we also collected a few pieces of art and completed a new art container in the process. By the way, in the middle of this grassy patch is secret seashell number 20. Now, where was I? Oh, right, I remember. We retrieved the five golden leaves from Canalit Castle and returned them to Richard. And we also obtained the slime key, which we used to unlock the third dungeon. And guess what? In this episode, we're finally going to be exploring the third dungeon! I know, it's been a long time coming. All right, enough fanfare. Let us enter. The Dark, Gloomy Dungeon. Level 3, Key Cavern. Not one of my favorite dungeons, I have to say. I'm not a big fan of the music, and I'm not a big fan of the layout. Don't get me wrong, this dungeon is not difficult by any means. It's just kind of boring. I'm also not a big fan of this vacuum map. It will push us away rather than draw us in like the Back Mountain Bottle Grotto did. We don't have the force to overcome it just yet, but we will momentarily. Pick up a jar, throw it at the door, and it will open, just like the one in Candlelit Castle. And on the other side, we have some enemies to deal with. These are red bomb bites. Obviously inspired by the bomb bombs from the Mario series. These guys can be rather dangerous because when you strike them with a sword, they'll start ricocheting around the room and they will eventually explode. Obviously, those explosions are very dangerous. So do your best to avoid them. You can, however, use them to your advantage by getting them to run into other enemies, which will, more often than not, kill them instantly. Once all enemies have been eliminated, open the chest to obtain the first of several keys you will obtain in the dungeon. And that's the main gimmick. As the name of the dungeon implies, this place is filled to the brim with small keys. I think there are a grand total of 11 or so, but don't call me on that. Now inside this chest is... Azul. Yep, this is the first instance of a chest being booby-trapped and they would later appear in Ocarina of Time as well. If we try and head to the right, we see that there is a chest surrounded by crystal platforms, and there's nothing we can do about that just yet. The crystal switch is definitely closer than you think it is. One thing I also forgot to mention are these crystals up here. Oh, what a weird object. There must be some way to tackle this obstacle. Just like the pots and the rocks in the classic games, that message would appear all the time until you obtain the proper item to destroy them with. Needless to say, it got annoying real fast. And speaking of annoying, we have this room. We could destroy the Stalfos here, but that will do us no good. We must destroy all of the enemies, and there's a gel on the other side, which we can't get to yet. So we'll have to leave that room for the time being. There are also a lot of souls in this dungeon, which may or may not serve as a hint to what we'll be fighting later on. As you can see, four directions and four locked doors, but only one key. We're going to start by unlocking the door to the left, where we'll encounter an annoying new enemy. This guy. Or these guys, I should say. These are pair odds. Pair odds are 
really strange looking, and the word odd is in their name, so I guess it is to be expected. But they're pretty irritating to deal with. If you get close to them, they'll teleport away and throw a projectile at you. This makes fighting them with your sword rather difficult, which means we need to attack them from a distance. Ipso facto, bombs. You want to come into the dungeon with plenty of bombs beforehand, because you'll need them to defeat the pair odds. Thankfully, this won't be much of an issue once we obtain the dungeon item. But for now, you'll have to uh, be conservative about using your bombs. And once all enemies have been defeated, the key falls from the ceiling. Now, if the key does fall in the pit, don't worry. Just exit and re-enter the room, and it will respawn. Next, we're going to head down here, where we will encounter more conveyor belts and more annoying enemies. Yeah, isn't this fun? If you can, try and keep the pair odd up there. Because it's much easier to hit them up there than it is down at the bottom. So I'm gonna see if I can try and throw this bomb onto that conveyor belt right there. And I failed. Wonderful. So I'm gonna try something else. I'm going to stand on this stretch of land right here and also use pots to defeat the parods if there are any nearby. So we're just gonna position ourselves in just the right way and there we go! Andy left us a piece of power. Oh, and also a small key. That's kind of important, too. Oh, no. You are mine. I love the piece of power. Oh, I definitely feel the power. Anywho, let's go ahead and open this door, which contains the crystal switch. Very nice indeed. And once both of these guys have bitten the dust, yet another small key falls from the ceiling. Swat the crystal switch to turn it red, and we're going to head back up the stairs because now that the blue platforms are down, we can open this chest to obtain the stone beak. Very nice indeed. But that's not all we can do. If you remember, there was a room with a bunch of crystal platforms that were raised. And now that the blue platforms are lowered, we can go ahead and obtain the goods. There's not really much for me to talk about in this dungeon, I have to say. It's kind of uh, boring. That's the best word I can use to describe Key Cavern. All right, there we go. Now, once all enemies have been defeated, open the chest to obtain the map. Let's take a quick look-see at this map. As the name of the dungeon suggests, it looks like a key. And this is also one of the few dungeons that has more than one floor. I affectionately refer to the bottom floor as the small key, and the top floor as the big key, which may or may not be a reference to items you can collect in the Zelda franchise. Anywho, I think I've said too much. Let's go down the stairs and unlock this door, which is going to take us to yet another staircase. That staircase is going to, uh, bring us to the top floor, which is good, because that's what we want. And up these stairs is yet another room, which connects to what I consider the main room of the dungeon. There are a bunch of souls down here, and we'll need to, to destroy all of them in order to collect, you guessed it, yet another key. All right. In here is the main area of the dungeon. We've got these two hooded stall thumbs. More importantly, we also have some locked blocks that we need to ultimately unlock. And a guardian acorn. 
That's good. We have one key, but one's not enough. We'll need four in order to get to those stairs. But for now, we're going to head all the way up here, past the Stalfos, and through this passage. On the other side, we meet some of the scariest enemies in the game, Green Bombites. They aren't scary because of their attacks. No, because they're actually pretty easy to defeat. No, they're scary because when you hit them, oh my god, that is a freaky face. They'll follow you and explode. If memory serves, this is the only room in the game where you encounter the bomb lights. But then again, I could be wrong. All right, once they've all been defeated, let's move on to yet another room with even more enemies. And now that they're all defeated, open the chest and obtain the compass. I don't know why I decided to start talking with a French accent. Now, although it doesn't look it, there is a bombable wall here as indicated by the sword sound. So let's set a bomb, walk away, wait for it to explode, and presto! We got some more red bomb bites to deal with here. Wow, talk about a chain reaction! I only had to swing my sword once and they all exploded. That's nice! And there is small key number two. So we're going to head back the way we came, and we'll want to make sure that we have a steady supply of bombs, because we're going to need them momentarily. Alright, let's go ahead and get rid of you. There we go. This time we're going to head to the left. Oh, yet another piece of power. I like. I like very much. All right, we've got some more pair odds, and I want to try something. Oh, man, they can still catch you even while you're in the air. Well, no matter. Throw a bomb, damage them once, and I'm going to see if I can get them to right next to each other, which they do. So let's throw another bomb, and kill them both at the same time. Very nice. Once again, if you don't have any bombs, they can prove rather difficult to destroy. So be sure that you are conservative in your bomb throw. And that lesson will also come use, useful once we uh, start fighting the mini bosses. Now, I am out of bombs, but I'm not worried because more will be on the way. In fact. That revolving panel leads us to a room where we can jump to collect some bombs. Wow, thank you for destroying that Stalfos for me, good sir. Let's hear what this owl statue has to say. To defeat the black monsters with the hard shell, feed them something explosive. Those are definitely words of wisdom. And we'll need to apply that because... That is a reference to the mini-boss of the dungeon. Inside this chest is 50 rupees. Very nice indeed. So we need to walk all the way down here, push this block aside, and now we're going to walk through this door, where we will encounter the mini-boss of Key Cavern. Or mini-bosses, I should say. These are the Dodongo snakes. And like all Dodongo creatures, you need to throw bombs in their mouths. They don't attack it directly. If anything, they're pretty slow. So, uh, they're really easy to outmaneuver. Alright. Each Dodongo snake takes three bombs to destroy. And you want to be sure to not throw them directly in the front. Otherwise, they will shake their heads and then they'll change directions. 
Alright. Let's see if we can go ahead and go yeah. in your direction. No! You're the way stuff. I should also mention that if the bomb is about to explode, you can pick it up and it will reset. So as long as it doesn't explode, you can pick it up and throw it as many times as you want. Go! Okay, one down, one to go. This is not a very tough fight at all, if you can call it a fight, because they just sort of squirm around. By the way, if you run out of bombs, you can leave the mini-boss area through these stairs. This is one of the few instances where you can actually walk out of a boss fight in order to restock and then come back and try again. However, their health will replenish. Okay, now that all of that is said and done, the portal has appeared and we'll be using it momentarily. But first, we need to open this chest. Push this block to the left and this block up and open the chest. What's inside? You got the Pegasus boots. If you hold the L button, you can dash. Try going for a long jump. Oh boy, are these boots nice. First of all, they're automatically equipped, just like the power bracelet is. In the classic games, you had to assign them to one of the two buttons. But here, no, you can use them right off the bat. Secondly, with the Pegasus boots, we can destroy these weird crystals we've seen throughout the dungeon. Hold down the L button and dash straight through them. Very nice indeed. Not only that, but dash attacks are twice as powerful as regular sword slashes. They're just as strong as the spin attack. Although the dash attack might be more of an appealing choice because you don't have to waste time charging like you do the spin attack. But that's not the only use the Pegasus boots have. If you combine them with the rock spell, you can use your speed to jump extra long distances, allowing you to clear wide gaps. And we'll be doing that a couple of times throughout the dungeon. Yeah, the Pegasus boots are awesome. Speaking of awesome, another small key. And that was the fourth key we needed in order to unlock those blocks. But that's not all we can grab while we're here. We're going to move up and through these crystals to finally destroy this gel that has been trolling us since the beginning of the dungeon. Goodbye and good riddance. Now we'll be able to uh, destroy both of those stalkers in order to uh, get the treasure chest that's in this room. Now I want I want to know something. Does the dash attack work better on stalkers? No, it doesn't. It will still jump away from you. Man, those stalkers must have some pretty good reflexes, I must say. Not bad for a bunch of old bones, but in this chest is a gold rupee worth 300 rupees. Yeah, we are overjoyed with the capital O. If you remember, we need 980 rupees in order to purchase the bow and arrow. And that is just the boost we need in order to eventually get it. We're still 300 or so rupees off, but we'll definitely be able to farm that much before we actually need it, because we'll need the bow and arrow before we enter the sixth dungeon, and that's still quite a ways away. Speaking of dungeons, we're almost finished with this one, so after we push the blocks aside, we want to walk down and then back up again, where we will encounter yet another owl statue. Poke suspicious parts of the wall with your sword and listen to the sound of it. Yeah, 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 we already know that. But if you look closely, you can see these tiles are arranged in the shape of an arrow. So, set a bomb nearby, 
step back, and blow it up to reveal a secret passage. Now, I want to see if I can sneak up on these guys. Oh, that was really nice. The dash attack is also useful for sneaking up behind enemies if you don't want to directly engage them. There's also another bombable wall here. With that, we won't need bombs anymore in this dungeon. You see that large pit? Ordinarily, this would be a problem with the Rock's Feather alone, but since we have the Pegasus Boots, we can use the extra speed to clear that gap with little issue. And again, to open this chest, which contains the Nightmare Key. Very nice indeed. So as I'm unlocking the blocks, I want to mention something rather ironic. If you remember my video of Bottle Grotto, I mentioned that the dungeon in the remix looked much more like a grotto than the one in the classic game did. Well, I have to say, I've got the opposite problem with Key Cavern. I think it looked more like a cavern in the classic games. In the, in the remakes, this is this looks much more like a temple, not a cavern. I just find that ironic that I have the opposite problem in two dungeons, and one follows the other. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you really think about it. Anywho, now that the blocks are... Ow! Jerk. I'm going downstairs, so I won't be bullied anymore. Right here is a red thwomp, and that is an epic-looking face. In order to get past him, we'll need to dash into him and... Oh, that really looks painful. He looks like he is throbbing in pain. So, jump and dash... And watch out for the piranha plant in that pipe, mind you. Now in this room, we have some more pair eyes. And defeating them is no longer an issue because your dash is faster than their teleport, which is good. And once all pair odds have been defeated, we can go through. Where we encounter a whole lot of conveyor belts before the boss's room. Now believe it or not, there is a small key hidden in here, and I have no idea why. It's an extra key that we really don't need. This is the only instance of a Zelda dungeon having more than one key necessary to keep the dungeon. But I can think about that later. Let's go ahead and open the door to the boss's room. But before I do anything, I just want to make sure that I collected everything in the dungeon and it appears that I did. So let's go through. Nino, Nino, you can't find me. Nah, nah. Well, he seems confident, but there's nothing here. Except a bunch of souls that drop from the ceiling. Well, take a closer look. The room shakes before the souls fall, so we need to make the room shake. So, dash into the wall, and down comes the boss. Squaring off against the Slime Eye. This guy is pretty similar overall. First, he needs to target his eye, and like most slime based bosses, when you damage him, he will start to off. Now, once he's almost separated, you need to dash through and separate them into two parts. And believe it or not, that's the hardest part of the battle. The slime eyes will try and jump on top of you, and each eye takes more hits in order to destroy. So jump out of the way, slash the eye, and all is done. Yeah, really, really easy. And we've got yet another heart container. Very nice. That brings our heart container total to nine. And now that the slime eye has been defeated, we obtain our third instrument of the sirens. You've got the sea lilies back. 
so far. When you play the instruments in front of the egg, the windfish will wake and you will leave this island. Now you must hasten to the Yarna Desert. The dark, monstrous inhabitants of the sand will show you the way. Hoot, hoot. Guys, next time.